Hey guys, John with Off Grid Homesteading here. I wanted to show you, uh, this is actually version 3 of my video on how to get unlimited uh, internet access uh, using um, the cellular network and I'm currently using the AT&T cellular network um, out here in rural America. So this right here is the MF279. This is the new uh, internet box by AT&T Wireless. Um, on the rural plans that you have to buy, uh, that you can only buy in specific cities and states, you can actually go look at our blog uh, that I go over and outline all that stuff at offgridhomesteading.com. Look for the blog that talks about this uh, MF279 two, two, uh, on the new box and all the specs. Um, the information that came in the manual for the, the unit itself um, did not have the right adapters or right uh, information for the uh, external antenna port, so I have the corrected information on my blog page. But um, let me let me show you kind of how this is set up, and I'm going to do this as a brand new video, not just as an extension to the other uh, other couple of videos I've made, uh, because it actually has made a difference. And I just did a speed test just a second ago. Um, we were averaging um, uh, probably 30 to 40 percent less speed um, using the previous uh, router. Uh, just because of the way that it's built. So let me just show you what this unit looks like. So this is the AT&T home base and I, I cannot just have it mounted on the wall here. But you can see uh, there is um, your battery pack and uh, network information and stuff down there. You got a WPS uh, button here on the side. But here's my most exciting features um, that I can share with you. Okay. So here's your left antenna port external. There is uh, your power plug in here, one ethernet port, uh, one phone jack out. Yeah, there's actually two phone jack outputs um, and then there's another uh, port over here. Now the manual says <coughs> that these are TS9 ports. These are not. This is actually a uh, SMA. So if you look on the top here, this is actually an SMA uh, female, SMA female port. Sorry, I just can't get it close enough. That's an SMA female port coming out of there. And this connection, that is an SMA male connection coming out. So I took, and I've tried every configuration, I've tried wiring both up together, I've tried them um, you know, individually. So what I'm doing in my configuration to get a uh, decent speed, let me show you what the speed I just got just about a minute ago. Um, I did a speed test and I got 55 millisecond ping time, 8.25 download uh, megabits and 5.2 up. I've gotten as high as about 11 and a half uh, down and as high as about seven and a half to eight and a half up out here. Now I got to tell you, I called um, 18, oh, by the way, while I'm still here, this is my um, login for my AT&T, and this is my signal strength um, right here on, on the box itself. So I'm actually getting 4G LTE at 61 uh, decibels. So, the way that I have mine set up, and I'll take you outside and show you, but I've got, uh, on the other side of that window, there's an external antenna, Yagi antenna that I've hooked up that runs in from out there, comes in behind here, down, comes up over the top, actually runs all the way down, comes around here, and this is this is pretty big, guys. This is uh, yeah, this is the LMR 400 cable right here. So I got a hundred foot of LMR 400 cable, and they're terminated with uh, N connections. Let me turn this fan off. They're terminated with N connections right here. Okay, so what I do is I have an N, con this is the N connector here, and then I have a, uh, this is an N male, so I have an N female adapter that goes to the F connector that is on my WeBoost. So let me just take this off. Uh, well, I don't take it off right now. But anyway, so you got your power here. But here's the cool thing. Down below, this is how I got it all to work. So this is a T adapter, an SMA. Uh, T adapter, so it's a female, uh, let's see, so this is a basically a male SMA uh, T adapter right there. Okay. And then from 
the uh, from the T adapter that is then going from that little cable right there ruts up here to the internal uh, Wilson electronics antenna and then the other side of it I have connected on the T following up this little cable here <sighs> which actually goes right there and then back over into the top of the MF279. Now, I tried using the left side and I got horrible service. I tried using a Y adapter um, and then going directly into this. I got worse service than this was completely disconnected from internal antenna. And then I used the right side here and I got about a 30 to 40% increase in strength. So, um, anyway, here's what happens when you have that um, the booster and stuff on so 65 decibels here I'm going to do another speed test right here so you can see it I'll do it live hopefully we still have good speed for this demonstration So we're getting about seven, almost at megs down, four, four and a half, three, five. Okay. So that's our final speed, 68 milliseconds, ping time, 7.1 downloads, 5.38 uh, upload. Now let me show you what happens if I turn off my WeBoost. Now some people, if you have decent in internet connection, let me turn this around. If you have decent internet um, signal strength, like right now, if I disconnect my WeBoost, I get zero bars. So this is actually showing up as four bars right here. Okay? Well, watch what happens when I turn off my WeBoost. I'm going to turn my little adapter off here, and you can see my lights and stuff will go off. Okay? Now, in just a moment, my bar strength went down to 1. Alright, so now the Wii Boost is off. I'm going to come back over to my computer. I'm going to log back into the router. And I'm going to come over here to settings, network, and look at my signal strength now. negative 130 dBm, which is basically no signal. Now let's get over here and try to do a speed test. We probably can get some download, but I guarantee we're probably going to have very minimal or limited upload speeds, or none. Because I, I can't push that far out. Our, our um, uh, antenna connection that we're trying to reach is about 11 miles from here over the valley. And as a matter of fact, I called AT&T to... Uh, there you go. So it gets a, gets a download, but it just can't push the data up. So what you know when it's that slow when the internet uh, speed is actually that slow I can get um, sorry I can get uh, uh, you know I could you know maybe pull down an email once in a while but if I'm sending an email or something like that out or sending a text message out something like that I just cannot get any service so let me show you what the outside setup looks like okay so doggies here. Hey, little doggies. Okay, so that's uh, south. So directly over this little ridge here is a shot to about 11 miles away where um, there is a cell tower that's in the next city over. Okay, so that's, let's keep this south-facing view. 
Here's my external antenna. This is a um, highly directional 700 megahertz to I think 27 or 29 megahertz Yagi wideband antenna. Okay, that has little um, end connectors there as well. So you've got a female end that comes off of this antenna. Now you can buy this antenna with different connections. So female antenna comes off of it to the male uh, end right there, which is on the LMR 400 which then I have just running straight down along the ground for now because it's a temporary location. Hi, turkey turkeys. How are you guys? Um, and then that runs down here into the bottom of the trailer right into where the office is behind that window. So, going back over here. This is pretty much straight south. So. I'm looking at the antenna up there. I'm shooting right past that tree to that valley over there, and that's what's giving me um, giving me my uh, internet. The minute I turn it off, my uh, internal booster inside there cannot reach either outside of the trailer or make a, a constant connection that direction. So, um, if I look this way, so now this is straight north. There is an antenna that's about seven or eight miles that way. And there's an antenna about nine miles that way. The problem is that is much higher elevation than this way. So that eventual that that little valley right there is the only reason I'm able to get internet out here. Um, and I'm sorry about the wind noise if you're hearing that. So I actually called AT&T last week to deal with uh, you know sometimes the internet speed just gets. Um, I have very low internet speed coming in and uh, point, you know, very, less than point 0.1 going out. So um, I actually called the at t to talk to him about the box. And uh, you can actually see right here, um, where is it? We've got a blue bar on here saying it's just, uh, you know, no signal really. Um, let me turn the WeBoost back on. And you can see what happens. Okay, that's gonna turn on. Let's see what happens to the signal over here. Now we got two blue bars. It takes a moment for that other unit to get going. Any more? Any more? Any more? Okay, so blue is like 3G connectivity. Um, now we're on zero bars. Back to three. It's just still trying to figure itself out. So the, when you have an issue like that, simply turn off the router at the top here just give it a moment and then let's go ahead and reset the router and turn it back on again so we'll go ahead and give that just a moment to get going when I called ATT last week uh, when I was having uh, some sorry some slow speeds on this thing um, what was happening is, uh, uh, you know, I called them up and they said, hey, uh, what's your service address out there? And I gave them the ad there. So they said, we don't have AT&T service out there. And I know we had service out here because I checked my cell phone when we first, before we bought this piece of land, and I was getting a signal on both Verizon and AT&T. As a matter of fact, I had the Verizon, I bought the Verizon grandfather plan using the, uh, the Novatel T1114. Um, router and I was using that with the in external antennas but I was having all kinds of issues whenever, whenever there's a internet speed problem or anything like that uh, what would happen is because I was renting that box from somebody else um, the challenge was if I needed technical support you couldn't call anybody to get tech support you'd have to call whoever you got the box from and then they rented it from somebody else and it was just a pain in the ass so um, you know I wasn't ever able to you know get tech support from the right person at the right time. Okay, so the looks like the router. Um, actually, so when I went from the Verizon grandfather plan over to the at and uh, I was pretty excited about that. Now we've got four bars back on the box. The Wii Boost is on, and now we are getting again. 71 dBMs on 4G LTE. See what happens. So, anyway, 
those are some of the um, the issues and things that I have to you know deal with. I can get my work done here. Um, I can get my work done, and I can use um, I can use the uh, the wired connections uh, with that box. It also um, has a number of uh, let me see here um, has a number of advantages using the external port. From what I've seen, if you have good signal, you you don't need the Wii Boost at all. You can actually go directly from the um, the MF two seventy nine directly to some external antennas and from what I've under, uh, read and understand about that it's a MIMO port multi in multi out so you could actually go directly from a uh, an SMA male connection directly to a Yagi which is directional outside on a bar now from what I understand um, the Yagis have to be 45 degrees out of uh, phase with each other so if you have a bar like this you'll put one antenna like this and then the other one will be down like this so you've got uh, two antennas actually shooting at a uh, at a different angle uh, straight you know two antennas like this facing one direction just south like it was in our situation and um, that way you can uh, get the MIMO functions of that uh, router so hope that helps you um, you know, if you're looking at the AT&T grandfather plans, you can get a really good deal on it. You've got decent signal that might be okay, but for the price here, I would buy one of these AT&T um, uh, wireless home base boxes. As a matter of fact, I have a cell phone I mean, phone service that I have off of the box too. So at the top, um, at the top there that I showed you, there's a. Um, This little black wire here is running directly into my hardwired phone. So you should be able to hear the dial tone right on that. I get great um, uh, home phone service there. And then this other little wire right here, the white one, I run that. Down into my, I've got a little um, Plantronics portable phone and I just take this and you can see here I just use this combination and this is a oh, I forget which Plantronics it is hold on got the older version it is the zoom in so you can see it okay it's a Plantronics CT 14 so um, let me zoom back out here so what I can do is just simply clip this onto my um, belt clip. Got this that I put, I just bought this separately. So I, no, actually, as a matter of fact, this comes with the Plantronics. Um, and I just use this for all my outbound calls because trying to use a cell phone, uh, trying to use a cell phone inside here um, is just does not work very well. So um, get rid of this here. Let me check my speed again. Okay. Oh, we got good speed up again. So sometimes you just have to wait uh, until you get a good signal, good connection. And I can stream HD at about three and a half down uh, using the Amazon Fire. So this is actually a pretty decent connection this morning. Um, so when I'm doing work, if it's down below, you know, one one meg uh, upload speeds, it's excruciatingly excruciatingly painful. My guinea's going nuts outside the door. So right there, 9.93 down, 5.26 up. So this is a great solution. Uh, the AT&T box here is a great solution for uh, getting rural internet. Um, and I had the previous box before this, which was the Z700A, uh, I believe. And it did not have external antenna ports. The minute I put this in, I was getting about um, consistently 30% better throughput on this. It also has additional bands. This is the most current box that's out by AT&T right now. And this is um, February of 2018. I think this just came out in December. So um, I do highly recommend getting this box over the z 700A, which is by a ZTE, 
um, and going with the MF279 and then figuring out if, if you're in a remote location like me where you're really, really far out, um, just get yourself a, uh, now this piece here is going to be your uh, mail. It's a, a male SMA to a male SMA six foot extension. And then you have a male S you have a female SMA uh, on the two tips. And then you got a male SMA that actually screws into the, the Wii Boost. And then you just simply tie everything in together like that. And I found the best signal strength for me and my location is coming off of my right side antenna port. And when I use the Y, not so good. It was horrible. It was worse than disconnecting this. So I uh, hope that helps you. And if you like our channel, you like the video, thumbs up. Uh, tell people about it. You can actually read more detail on our website at offgridhomesteading.com. I have a blog that goes into um, very much a lot more specifics on the bands, what it covers, what uh, areas of, of the country that the plan is available right now, the 250 gig plan through AT&T, or the, it's now the, um, they had a 500 gig plan which was then upgraded to uh, uh, unlimited. So it was 500 for 100 bucks, including a, a phone with unlimited long distance. So 20 bucks for internet, 40 bucks for a phone. Crazy, or maybe it's the other way around. 40 bucks for internet, 20 bucks for phone. And then the $100 one was actually $80 for internet, 20 bucks for phone. So they dropped it to 95, and now they have an unlimited plan, no throttling on this. The, um, the only throttling that you, you have is on the prioritization based on how many people are on the internet at the same time. So again, there's our signal strength. And uh, like I said, hope that helps you out. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Um, anyway, I'm going to log into this box real quick. And uh, I'm going to show you the well, network. And you can see my signal strength is minus 65 dB. We're going to come over here to my other screen. And do a quick speed test. And just see what this is kicking in at today. So you think 10 megabits down is really uh, not that fast, but when you're not sharing your network with other people, um, it is pretty fast. So let's see how good we're gonna do today. This is pretty good, 11.4. Up, oh no, actually 11.4 megs down, five and a half megs up, which is pretty sweet. But I don't have more work to do online today. Okay, so there's our uh, final uh, total for this morning. So let me show you. I'm going to open up a window over here. I'm trying to do it as best as I can. And let me open up a new window. Bring it over here. And let's just open up um, YouTube. Let's see how quickly it pops on the screen. Pretty good. And then let's uh, let's look at uh, a video that's out here. These guys does Fiverr. Thousands of talented freelancers on demand. Skip the ad. You're probably already aware that avocados are one of the most nutritious foods around. These creamy fruits are great for weight loss, healthy skin, and Okay, let's go find something else. Let's, let me go sign in. Matter of fact, let's, uh, let's go ahead and go on down to my off-grid homesteading channel. And then I will show you... Um, here's our most popular video, the, you know, how to get, uh, unlimited internet. So I'm going to do, this is a new version of that video. Hi, this is John with Off-Grid Homesteading. And for all you other off-grid, uh, homesteaders or just homesteaders living out in rural... Okay, so we're, actually, I'm going to stream this now. Um, Gus, hush. No I'm going to go ahead and stream this at 720. Which you can use for getting to the internet and things like that watch this video. This is the internet uh, interface to my uh, router. There you go. Here at the house. And you can see it's the at t Let's uh, go to something different. Say about your home base. 
thanks for tuning in. I want to say thanks for all my to all my subscribers that subscribed on the last video. Let's go to another one. Hush, Gus. I'm making a video. And you can see we're running in. Let's go back down here again. Let's go up to 1080p and see how that works. So 1080p, sometimes a little bit tough out here. Let's go down to 720p. That's 480. Guys, hope your day is going great so far. Here. Back to 720. Today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about cord cutting. So depending on who you're talking to, cord cutting can mean different things. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that cord cutting... Okay, so we're having a little bit of latency issues on the network right now. So go ahead and cancel any subscription for pay TV. That could be Dish Network. When you have something like that go on, I just simply switch down to about 480p, and that seems to give me a pretty consistent connection most of the time in most videos. Cut the cord on. Now, what I don't like about the term cord cutting is this. So anyway, hope that helps you give you a good example of uh, using the AT&T MF279 box in a real-world situation in an area where AT&T says we're not supposed to be getting any kind of cell phone signal, uh, which we are because of the WeBoost booster. So again, thanks again for watching. Hope that helps you.